Hey, it's your Bruce Moore, Tom Moffat. Guys, a year ago, uh, Thanksgiving last year, day before Thanksgiving, I lost my car. I was in an accident. And um, I decided not to get another car. Hello, everybody. Today on YouTube, I went to a thrift store to get some stuff to sell on eBay. And as I was coming out, came over here and I got my car totaled. So that's going to be the most expensive style of stuff I ever sold on eBay. So this is goodbye to the the Moon Rover, 29 years old, almost made it to 30. Don't think we can buff that out. So that's the end of the Corolla. The fact that I was hardly ever using my car, sometimes I would have cobwebs on the wheels. Plus it was costing me like $1,500 a month in insurance. And it was a very old car. And I was having different expenses that were unexpected. And it was adding up to a lot of money. And also the fact that I didn't think the accident was my fault. And the insurance company tried to say it was, even though I got hit from behind by somebody who was changing lanes, it just made me upset. So I said, you know, screw it. So I've been experiencing the wonders of Uber, uh, public transportation buses, and e-bikes. So if you've been thinking about, could you give up your car? There's 8 billion people on planet Earth, and majority don't have cars. But if you live in South Florida, you, you need a car. Um, or do you? If you've been thinking about what should you do, or could you do it, based upon uh, saving money and this has been my experience. Everybody's going to be different. You're going to have different areas. Some people will be very rural. Maybe they're very mountains, hills. They might not be able to use e-bikes like I have or the access to Uber and so on. But everybody's going to have advantages, disadvantages. So I thought I'd just go over what's been happening in the last year in my adventure with not having a car. Um, the first thing I should mention, I only use the bike about twice a week regularly like going around the neighborhood like hour and a half trips and then I use it for going to uh, 19 different doctors <laughs> and uh, going to the store um, but I found that most stores now deliver uh, even Home Depot delivers Walmart delivers uh, the drugstore delivers so uh, it, that, that reduced the amount of trips I was making even if I had my car um, so I don't use transportation as much as I had in the past once I found out the different things that are available to me uh, where I don't have to get it in a car or, or public transportation. Um, the the uh, Most of my trips have been on my Ansher Gladiator uh, bike I got at Walmart. It just recently, last week, the battery stopped working. I called them. They responded. I emailed them. They responded immediately. They said they would notify Walmart. So <laughs> I'm going to wait a week and then contact them again. There are uh, videos on YouTube showing how you can uh, wake up a battery that may have been discharged. I would charge my battery up every time I, I used it. And uh, I'm not sure what happened, but for some reason, the battery doesn't seem to be working at all. Um, but I do have a backup e-bike. I had purchased before the answer a refurbished Jetson Bolt, very tiny folding e-bike, and it was like $200. And I've been using it as a replacement. It's a little bit squirrely. It's, uh, it, it takes a little bit get used, getting used to, um, but uh, it does have a lower center of gravity, so a little bit more safe. But um, I've been using the e-bike in, in place of the car pretty much totally, except for in some cases when it was raining and I had to go somewhere, I took an Uber, which I found to be a very uh, easy, no-brain uh, exercise in, in uh, transportation. It, it was simple to download. I'm, I'm a dinosaur. 
I, when it comes to technology, it was very simple to download the app to my phone and use the program and, and have drivers come and pick me up and so on. Um, I also have been taking buses, which has been an adventure. Public transportation, you don't have to leave the country to go to a foreign land. You can just take public transportation and you will be uh, constantly uh, entertained um, and uh, endangered. <laughs> Um, the public transportation in Broward, if you're a geezer like I am, it's only one dollar. So it's uh, very difficult not to take the bus sometimes. The, the cool thing about the buses, I found, is that they have a rack in front to where you can add your bicycle and you can carry it. It was very difficult to find bicycles that were inexpensive that were under 50 pounds because that's the weight limit they have for the buses here. Um, they don't allow you to put the bu the bicycle inside the bus. I did see some people riding the buses and they took a scooter. And if you're a geezer, you're allowed to sit on the front where there are benches and there's spaces underneath. Or if you had a scooter and you were older, you could take it with you and then put it underneath the seat quite easily. I think that might be an alternative if they let you uh, put the scooters on. It could be up to the uh, permission of the driver. Maybe the rules aren't enforced universally, but it, it did seem like there were several people putting their scooters on the buses, even though I think the, there is a regulation where you're not supposed to bring the scooters on board. But um, what I'm getting at is a scooter might be even a better uh, substitute for the e-bike because it's very uh, uh, handy and uh, transportable. You can just fold it up and put it in the grocery cart if you're in the shopping center and so on. Um, where I rode the bicycle, we have in Broward County, we have a few bike lanes that are just, the ones that are on the major streets like uh, University, and they're just, they're, they're just paint on the side of the road. <laughs> they're, 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 they're scary. I don't recommend you riding the bicycle on the bike lanes on the major streets in Broward County. They're, they're not, they, they don't give you any confidence that somebody who has been drinking or just doesn't like people on bicycles would not just move the wheel just a few inches over to the right and uh, you would just be a, a little notice on the newspaper on uh, section B, page three. Um, so I, I there are some there are some roads where they have some bike lanes that are just like two lane. There's extremely little traffic. I feel very comfortable on them. But for the most part, I ride the sidewalks because it's permissible in the state of Florida. But you have to be aware that you are sharing the bike the, the sidewalk with other people, and and they have the same rights you do. So um, you have to be very careful. And and the reality of is that if there's people walking, you still have to give them the right of way. And, and if they're walking their dog. You have to be extremely careful because dogs are not aware of, of the rules and regulations pertaining to their behavior. Um, people with uh, baby carriages, you would just want to leave the sidewalk and go to the other side of the street because there's no experience which something should happen where a man on a bicycle got involved with a woman in a baby carriage where the man <laughs> was uh, given the benefit of the doubt. Um, you should be very careful around people on the sidewalks. And, but you also have to be careful with people who are um, out to get you. <laughs> I've had people on the uh, bus benches uh, when they see me put their legs out just when I'm coming. So I either go over their legs and create an international incident or end up in the street. Um, so you have to be very careful. Plus you have a middle schooler near me that is full of middle schoolers and when they're alone, they're okay, but when they're crowds, they want to grab onto your bicycle and so on and cause uh, tomfoolery. And if they're with girls where they can show off, it's biology. They just have to do something crazy. So you had better, if the, the, the school, Tom, the middle school, they have like three different schedules. So there are always people, kids coming and going. So if, if it's that time of day where they're letting out or they're going in, uh, you want to avoid that area. Um, it's not good. Also, there's other hazards of riding on the sidewalk. 
you oftentimes you find stuff laying on the sidewalk you would not find on the street or even the shoulder and you have pavement that's broken and different things a lot of surprises but the primary way to avoid accidents on the sidewalks is just to go a lot slower than you would normally go um, go at bicycle speed or even lower and you'll reduce the amount of accidents or the the uh, the results of any accidents so um, and it's still better to have an accident on the sidewalk than on a main through affair with uh, four lanes of traffic going 50 miles an hour um, also your biggest your biggest threat is going to be when you're crossing intersections um, because for some reason you're often invisible even if it's 12 o'clock in the day and you have a red hunting jacket on and it's full sunlight you're just they're like it's like you're a mirage they don't they don't recognize you exist and you have the light and you're going across and they just keep coming and it's kind of a little bit spooky um so it is it's there's a lot of hazards on the bicycle that you have to be aware of and, and educate yourself um <clears throat> the i mentioned that the buses do have a rack that you can put your bike on but you have to remove stuff from your bicycle you're not allowed to have things that are flopping around um, if you're riding a bike it's good to be a bicyclist in a sketchy area because you can keep moving but if you're going to a bus stop and going to be putting your bicycle on the bus sometimes you may have you may be at a bus stop in the sketchy area and you're sort of like sticking out you're you're a uh, weird person on a bicycle at a bus stop you're uh, a center of attention more than if you were just a uh, a regular uh, pedestrian waiting for a bus so you you uh, you also you're kind of stuck there because you have the bicycle it's difficult for you to to abandon it so you, <laughs> it's kind of you you want to be careful of the areas you're going at on your bicycle and uh, be take precautions you don't have a lot of cargo capacity on bicycles even though i have panniers and, and a, a little uh, basket in the front you can put groceries on them but it's limited um, and it's a little bit unwieldy and it makes it uh, a little unsafe sometimes so it's not as good for carrying things as i thought i'm a little bit disappointed you can you obviously you can you can carry stuff you can go to groceries and you get small uh, amount of items but the the uh, amount you can carry is not is I see people taking backpacks that that probably is a better way to go uh, by adding more uh, capacity but um it's a uh, it I would investigate those little tiny uh, cargo trailers people get with their bicycles if you're using it to carry a lot of stuff um, the cost I'll leave on the, the screen the cost that I've uh, incurred from buying the, the Jetson Bolt and the stuff I purchased for it and also for the ends here and um, it's still extraordinarily inexpensive both of those bicycles were some of the least expensive you can get and the items I've been purchasing are low cost and the repairs we've been making have been low cost so far. Although the battery for the Anseer Gladiator, if I have to buy another battery, it's going to be extremely expensive. But still, the most it would cost would be like over $200. Where with the automobile expenses, I was incurring like 150, 60 bucks a month just for insurance, not for any repairs or regular maintenance. Um, let's talk about the bus for just a second. The Broward County does have a uh, an extensive public transportation route routing system and they have an app for your phone which is unbelievable it works the app that Broward County has for the phone allows you to see exactly in real time where the buses are located and see how close they are to uh, your your bus stop and you can look at the schedules to see if you're going someplace how to schedule what bus you should take and so on um, 
the uh, that has been the biggest surprise has been the the technology behind the, the the bus app and how accurate it is in locating the bus and the the scheduling um, I've been very very surprised the uh, like I said the if you're over if you're retired retirement age you can take a bus for one dollar which is amazing um, <clears throat> They do have some very, very long bus rides. They make a lot of stops. And some of the buses, they will stop at a transit area where they change drivers or they have a 15-minute stop or something. So it's something that would take you uh, a trip by the car would be 30 minutes, could take you like 55 minutes with the bus. Although there are some bus routes I've seen like to the beach, where they're practically the same uh, because of heavy traffic they're practically the same time as it would take you with the automobile um, the uber experiences i've enjoyed thoroughly uh, my talking with uber drivers because they've all been from other places around the planet and had interesting stories to tell and uh, were very educational uh, experiences compared to um, some of the taxi <laughs> rides I've had in the past. Um, the uh, the Uber prices do change a little bit depending on where you're going and time of day and so on. So they're uh, they can be a little more expensive than than. Uh, you would had expected um, now if you're if you've given up your car and you have a job like the majority of people um, and if you're going to be taking a bike you want to get uh, uh, go on your computer and look at Google Maps and find the best route the best route may not always be the one that is the quickest you want to look at the one that's going to be the safest for you and oftentimes that won't be the quickest but Google Maps is wonderful because you can open up and even like if they have a bike lane, you can use the Google Maps to see. Sometimes you'll find surprises where the bike lane ends for seven blocks and then it will continue on after you've gone through this area of overpasses and, and jungle of uh, interchanges and, and intersections that are going to be a nightmare for a bike rider. So you have to... Um, use google map it's going to be your friend they also have a little, little uh, icon you can click on and it will allow you to see the bus routes for your area not bus routes but the bike paths speaking of bike paths there um, are surprisingly two um, phenomenal bike paths in Broward county one goes uh, along hiatus uh, north and south for a very long distance and this is a path that must be 15 20 feet wide and it goes on forever um, and it only has to stop at a, a couple of major intersections like uh, Sunrise and uh, Oakland and I've taken it a couple times where it goes close to the Everglades there's one section where you have to get off the path and then go uh, through the the weeds and the, and the jungle but you can get to an area that is uh, um, very uh, bucolic. It's very wild and wonderful. A lot of trees and stuff. And you can get uh, you're here in an area that's like millions of people, and you can go down this area and, and, and off the path, and like in ten minutes, be someplace where you're uh, out in the jungle next to the water. Although you do feel here the the uh, the uh, like I ninety five. It's 100 yards away but still it's uh it's fun the uh the safety issue of the bikes it's there's been a more than a few people killed on the bikes here in Broward County um some of them were uh far off the road it was nighttime and somebody came off the road they were being chased by the police and they got run over there was another person that was at an intersection and it's there since COVID happened, the amount of bicycle and pedestrian deaths in Florida has skyrocketed. 
there's a uh, there's a lot of people out there driving that should be taking their medication and they're not or uh, maybe they are taking medication and it's interfering and they're just they're not behaving um, normally it's just like um, and I also think there's there's an animosity against people on bicycles or scooters or I think car drivers don't like other car drivers and they definitely don't like other people who are not car drivers that are taking up space um, on the roads that they think that only they should be driving on. So it's, uh, it's, if you, if you live in an area that is more rural or doesn't have as much traffic, I think a uh, bike, e-bike would even be a better uh, solution for not having a car. Um, but it's still doable in, uh, some areas, but Broward is extremely anti-bike and there's very little experience uh, that drivers have of interacting with drivers, like uh, with bicycles. I know like there's some places that's very urban city areas where you have a lot of bicycle uh, riders in traffic because traffic is only going 15 or 20 miles an hour. It's jammed, packed. And so on a bicycle, you can actually go faster than the cars where here you often have stretches where the, the traffic is extremely fast. And like I said, they're not used to bicycles. So it's just not, it's not a good recipe for, uh, for safety at all. I've also noticed, except for Home Depot, I found only one retail place. Well, actually only re Home Depot I found was the only retail place that had a bike rack. If you want to take your bike to many places, sometimes the only place to lock up your bike is on a post out in a parking lot, maybe two or 300 yards away from the entrance of the store in the middle of a bunch of cars that you can barely see your bike from the store. So like, it's not a comfortable feeling to, to put your bike out in the middle of all these cars where nobody can see what's going on. It's like, um, if I was a bike thief, the thief, that's where I would want to find a bike for sure. Um, it's just, it's not set up for bikes. Nobody here um, has much experience dealing with them. Also, I've noticed that the sidewalks, I'm starting to notice more and more bicyclists on the sidewalks where before there was nobody. It was a desert, no pedestrian, nothing. And, uh, the people riding like the scooters and in the bicycle, some of them are going as fast as they can go and they don't have any rules about what side they should be passing on. They don't monitor the other people or, or make a, a, a beeping noise or a bell or nothing. So they come up behind you and um, you have to be very aware and use your mirrors. I do one thing that that's probably negative. I like to listen to music. But I, I put the ear, the music on very low so I can hear normal sounds. But uh, if someone's coming up behind me and they're not making a sound with their, their horn or something on the electric bike, it's very difficult to tell. So uh, I need to be using my mirrors more often because um, they're not indicating that they're in, in the area behind me and it could lead to a problem. But I do want to say going at extremely low speeds on the sidewalk where it's fairly safe listening to music has been extraordinarily pleasurable. I would never have imagined in a million years how much pleasure I would get out of riding a bicycle listening to music. Uh, or even even walking around because I've been doing it more walking. Um, so can you, can you survive without a car? Um, there's been some days when it rained and I had to take an Uber and there's been some days when I went to use my e-bike and it wasn't working. And so that was, but that could happen with the car, but everything that's happened with the e-bike so far, it's something I could go online and find out how to fix it myself. Like right now, I'm just waiting for a response from Walmart to see if they're going to replace my battery. If not, I'll have to uh, investigate seeing what I can do. Although it's very risky working with a lithium ion battery because they have been known to catch on fire and burn everything down. So you, you want to preferably charge your battery outside, not inside the house. And when you're done charging this, connect all of the cords and, uh, 
be as safe as you can and don't purchase very low cost third party chargers or um, rebuilt uh, batteries from sketchy companies that use extremely low quality material or a uh, workmanship it's not worth it um, think about owning a car there isn't only any um, repair you're going to get on your car that you're going to get out there with less than three four five hundred dollars where a battery for your bike might cost you a couple hundred bucks and you get a good uh, reliable one and then you're good to go um, where with the the car <laughs> It's just like a, it's an empty hole. You're just going to keep pouring money in. And as the insurance costs keep going up more and more, that's going to be as big a cost for owning a car as the maintenance and repair. And I don't see it getting any better because there's so much fraud going on of people cheating their insurance companies through insurance fraud for the cars. And also the cars are becoming so, more, so much more technically um, complicated like they have the, the, all, all of the electric cars now with so much of the technology in the very front of the bumper of the car where <laughs> if you hit anything, that's where, where the major damage is going to be occurring in your car. So everything is going to keep going up and up and up. And I think the e-bikes and the public transportation and Uber might be a way to go. I would investigate the little scooters, see if you can ride one first before you purchase. Um, but they look like they're a lot more portable. And see if your bus uh, uh, organist company will allow you to to take uh, electric vehicles on board or inside the buses. Um, I think you could take the e-bikes even on Amtrak if they're under a certain weight. Um, what am I forgetting? I've had some people contact me um, and let me know that they've had their bike for as uh, much as 8,000 miles so far. I put less than 1,000 miles so far on mine, but that's because I use it you know, very little each week. I would, I would definitely get a helmet and don't purchase those ones that look really cool on eBay. And when you, when you get them, the plastic is thin like the plastic bowls that your mother would use to have spaghetti. You want to, you can, because eBay does not allow uh, sellers to resell used bicycle or motorcycle helmets. You can go to thrift stores and find them very inexpensively. Um, I purchased a Schwinn bicycle helmet for like five bucks. And it's like a 40 or $50 helmet. So, um, it's the coolest thing about using bikes and buses, even Uber over the car is that it's been an adventure. Each time I go on the bike, I feel like it's just a little adventure. The other day I had to go to the doctor, so I checked the scheduling of the buses and went out front and hooked, got the bus and I took it down uh, to a, a street that I could take my bicycle to go to my doctor. And it was early in the morning. And when I got out of the doctor, it was still early and I'm riding through this neighborhood. It's very quiet. There's no traffic at all. And this very cool morning, there's still like a a lot of shade from the trees. It's all overglown, very quiet. And I come to this area where that had been a large building and it, I guess they tore it down, but they left a perimeter wall around the large property. Huge, like practically a whole block. And six foot wall. And I'm going down the sidewalk, shady, cool, nice breeze, listening to music. And these rabbits come out of holes in the wall on the sidewalk and stop and look at me. And I stop and look at them. And then they hop back through the holes in the wall. And I stop my bike and get off and look over the top of the wall. And there's like a all overgrown yard with trees and bushes and stuff. And there's a bunch of little rabbits in there. <laughs> it's like Alice in Wonderland. Um, you uh, don't have experiences like that when you're driving your car. Um, 
you see things and you're exposed to, to uh, sounds and sights and smells and things. It's just uh, a sensory experience you, you get that you don't get with your, your automobile. And it's a lot cheaper. Cars are like a chore. If you're, if you're someplace where there's not a lot of traffic, cars are wonderful. Um, I love cars and driving, but just monster traffic with crazy people. And it just got to be unpleasant especially with the insurance cost. So can you survive a year without a car? Um, I would say you could more than survive. You can, you can have adventures. You can have a lot of fun. And uh, I did have one accident. I did come off a sidewalk into some grass and I went back into a sidewalk and the wheel caught into the side of the sidewalk and I flipped over. Um, but a lot of things have improved since I started going a lot slower on the sidewalks. And um, when you're out there, keep your head on the swivel, even if you're listening to music. So guys, I know I'm leaving something out. Um, if I do, I'll have more information in the video description. I'll put some stuff in there. I can think of anything. But um, that's been my experience so far this past 12 months um, with uh, riding e-bikes, buses, and Uber instead of taking my car. All right, guys, hope this was helpful to you, and uh, take care. <laughs> See you out there.